There are many religious books claiming to be God's truth. If God wanted us to know a message was really from himself, he would give us a way to verify it. He did. He promises to announce future events in advance to prove that it is him. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Of all the so-called holy writings, only the Bible authenticates itself like this. In fact, God challenges anyone else claiming to be like him to prove himself in this way. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. Let's use the scientific method to see if the Bible really predicts the future as it boldly claims. Question. Can we verify that the Bible has accurately predicted the future? Science. Research. The Bible has predicted that Israel would be destroyed and that the people scattered for a specific period of time, after which to be reunited as a nation. As far back as the wilderness wanderings of Exodus, the Lord has foretold of Israel's diaspora subsequent regathering. You will be uprooted from the land you are entering to possess. Then the Lord will scatter you among all nations from one end of the earth to the other. This has actually happened twice. The first time Israel was conquered by Babylon. They were freed again after 70 years, exactly as predicted by the prophet Jeremiah. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Jeremiah prophesied the Babylonian captivity would last exactly 70 years. Both biblical and secular history show Babylon captured Israel in the spring of 606 BC, and the captivity ended exactly 70 years later in the spring of 536 BC. But you, O mountains of Israel, will produce branches and fruit for my people Israel, for they will soon come home. Israel was freed from captivity, yet still not a sovereign nation. While in Babylon, the prophet Daniel had also prophesied the fall of Jerusalem to Rome. More important to this experiment, Isaiah had prophesied that there would be a second return. Emphasis on the prediction of a second return. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. After the Romans sacked Jerusalem in 70 AD, they joined the providence of Judea together with Galilee to form a new providence called Syria Palestinia. To complete the disassociation with Judea, the Jewish people abandoned their homeland and spread throughout Europe. It was later settled by Arab peoples. I will bring back my exiled people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Much earlier, God had given the prophet Ezekiel the total number of years that Israel would be in exile. I have assigned you the same number of days as the years of their sin. So for 390 days you will bear the sin of the house of Israel. After you have finished this, lie down again, this time on your right side, and bear the sin of the house of Judah. I have assigned you forty days, a day for each year. God told Ezekiel the Jews would suffer for their iniquity for a total of 430 years. 
This, of course, is conditional upon their repentance and obedience. In the 26th chapter of Leviticus, God lists blessings and judgments for Israel based on their obedience and disobedience. If after all this you will not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over. So by God's stated standard, we conclude Israel's total time in exile to be 430 years if repented, and 430 times 7, 3,010 years if disobedient. We also know that Israel spent 70 years captive in Babylon. This leaves 360 years if repentant, and 2,520 years if disobedient. Hypothesis. If the Bible is truly the Word of God, it will meet the test of predicting the future in an accurate, mathematically verifiable way. To refine this hypothesis and eliminate all debate on which came first, the scripture of the fulfillment, we'll focus our experiment on Israel's Reformation in 1948, a fact which is in recent history and that no one can argue precedes the prophecy. Experiment. Calculate the total period of Israel's exile based on known historical fact compared to the Bible's predictions. Because the Jews did not repent and turn to God after their captivity, the 360 remaining years would be multiplied by 7, equaling a total of 2,520 biblical years the Jews would be left without an independent nation. A biblical year is based on the Hebrew calendar which was 360 days. To convert our 2,520 prophetic years into calendar years, we multiply 2,520 by the 360 days of the prophetic year. Our answer is 907,200 days. We then divide the 907,200 days by 365.25, the length in our solar year. Our answer is 2,483 calendar years. We now want to subtract the year 536 B.C., the year in which the Babylonian captivity ended, from our 2,483 years, keeping in mind there's no year zero. Our answer is, indeed, 1948, the year Israel was reinstated as a nation. Conclusion. The Bible precisely predicted the reformation of Israel to the very year, thousands of years ahead of time, based on the exact standards and figures found in the Bible. Science. Report the results. The Bible accurately predicts future events thousands of years ahead of time. This meets the standard specified by God in the earliest scriptures. One can reasonably conclude it is of supernatural origin, if not the very word of God himself. Ha!